Hello, today's the 14th of March and today we're going to be sowing Brussels sprouts. Seven Hills Brussels sprouts, an old variety with particularly tight sprouts on short and compact plants. We find this a really good one for exposed sites where the wind might blow your sprouts over. Going to be sowing them in cell trays. These cell trays here, 12 cells per tray and I'm going to be using multi-purpose compost. This is home-based brand with nothing else added to it. So we're simply going to start by filling up these cell trays with the multi-purpose compost. So a nice simple method, just going to be using the multi-purpose compost here, taking out any lumps as I go. Get that in the cell trays like so. So I've got my cell trays filled up, just going to push them down to give these seeds a nice firm base in which to germinate from. So it's going to be a very simple process. I'm going to put them all into an individual cell because I don't want to have to spend time pricking out. So basically one per cell tray, like that one there, some additional ones fell in. If that happens, it's not such a big problem to me because I will simply proceed to just pull out the ones I don't want as they grow. In many ways, you might be wise to put more than one in if you want to have a higher chance of getting a good amount of plants. And next stage is to simply put multi-purpose compost over the top like so. And then a tag with the date in which planted, 14th of March, what it is, Brussels sprouts, and the variety, Seven Hills. And next stage is to give them some water. I need to make sure they're getting plenty of water. One very common reason for lack of germination of seeds is lack of water. And if the water pushes the compost level down a little bit, don't worry too much about, uh, you know, put some more compost on the top and uh, that'll be just fine. Next stage are going to go in here. This is a mini greenhouse. And as you can see, it's within a polytunnel as well. So nice warm microclimate. They should germinate within the next two or three weeks. Greetings, so it's the 12th of April and we're carrying on with the Brussels sprouts. I've got some seven hills here. You can see the seven hills there. They're a bit on the leggy side. So the first thing we are going to do is to repot them into a bigger pot to sturdy them up a little bit. So what we do, we get our plant out, take a nice bit of care. We don't want to be damaging the plants or the roots or anything like that. And all we do is we just pop it out like so. There we are, make sure you don't damage any of it. And I've got a pot here of multi-purpose compost, home-based brand, nothing else added to it. And all I do is just push it down like this, nice and firm. Get it upright as possible. So this one here, you can see two actually, I must have put two seeds in there. So I'm going to just pop that one out like that. Now, I'm actually going to gently separate these to get them out. I hope you can see this okay. Pop them out like so. In fact, there's a third one there. We won't worry about the, that one. So you can see that there, look. So that's got quite a, a root on that. So I'm going to put my finger in, push my finger in like this, and try and get this one in as firm, as far down as I could get it, like so, like that. This one here, once again, push the finger in and push that in like that. And we've got these ones here as well. We're gonna pop that one out, try and get that out like that. And that's going in, just like so, like that. But actually, we're not done so bad. One, two, three, eight. So what we now do is we get multi-purpose compost and prop up our plants. You can push them down further if you want, if you've got a shortage of compost. They're not going to be in these pots too long, just long enough to let them sturdy up a bit and get bigger, and then I can replant them, or plant them out rather, probably at the allotment. So we just, uh, and just enough to prop them up. And of course you can even, like this one, look, you can even push it right down a bit further. As long as you don't damage it, just to get your just to get your plant nice and upright. Good rule of thumb would be to get them down about one or two mils 
just below the lower leaves and then that way that will give your plant a real good chance of firming up and we've just got one more to do here in fact we've got two just fill that up like that bit of compost there there you go so they should firm up very nicely then so these will be quite fine over here they don't need the additional warmth of the mini greenhouse you saw earlier so these are just going to go up here and hopefully within two to three weeks or so these will be ready for transplanting out at the allotment into their final place so actually that's not bad to be honest i've got eight plants there and assuming they all get through eight plants should produce a lot of sprouts plus what i'm i've planted today anyway i shall see you very soon Greetings, 20th of May, and today I'm going to be planting out some lovely Brussels sprout plants, variety Seven Hills. So the plants are down here, they look really good. I've got eight of them. I'm going to plant them about a foot or so apart, 30 centimetres. So I'm putting them here. Now, Brussels sprouts like firm soil. They like to grow upright, then that way they're less likely to blow. Hopefully blowing means when the sprouts go like that, and all the leaves are everywhere. You don't really want that can eat them like that of course but you want nice little sprouts don't you that are nice and compact and beautiful to eat so there we are now so compact soil compact ground compact ground growing medium so here this bit I regularly walk across this when I water my peas when I water my cabbages down here and um, yeah so it's quite compact here so you know if you want just go for a little jog you know walk up and down the area that's what I'm doing anyway so right here these plants are going to go so I'll show you what the plants look like so here's the plants looking really good so look at those they all look you know very similar to these here and I'm going to start by planting the first one here you're gonna to have to excuse the weeds there's only so much time one can devote to an allotment but um, you know going to have a bit of a weed over the weekend probably so I've got a brick here and uh, we're going to set a sprout plant together so I've got cabbage here, variety golden acre. So these are going to go next to them. Now, the first one is going to be planted here. I want to leave a little bit of space between myself and the pea plants, or the plants and the pea plants, you get what I'm trying to say, and so I can walk and pick them. So what I'm going to do is find my area where to start. I'm also going to be about 18 inches, a foot and a half or so away, 45 centimetres from the golden acre cabbage to allow them to get to their maximum size. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to pound the soil using this brick. You're better off using the side without the frog because of course the uh, frog's got an indentation in it. So we just really, no, you could do this or you could use a tamp like they use for concreting, anything to compact the soil. So just like this and it's brick diameter, so brick square. And that's uh, how I'm going to do the whole row really. So we get our plant out. Looks really good. So in here, I'm going to just make my hole where the plant is going to go. So I'm going to make it about as square as the pot is, you know, the, the growing medium root ball that's the term I'm looking for so there we go so we go like this and then what I'm going to do is use my brick again so what I'm doing is my utmost to encourage my plant to grow upright so that goes in like that depth wise I'm going to put it in quite deep literally where the first two leaves are i'm going to put the growing medium just under that so you can see the depth there look and i'm going to encourage the plant to go upright i really want it bolt upright okay don't want no slacking or slouching and if you end up covering a little bit of the bottom leaves you really don't need to worry get your brick again and really encourage your plant to remain upright so that's nice and firm a bit more growing medium over it once again 
Really take your time on this, don't rush, because we do like nice firm sprouts that don't blow. And that's it, do the whole lot the same, a foot apart, 30 centimeters. So here they are, all set out eight Seven Hills Brussels sprouts plants. Now, you won't lose by firming them down a little bit more. If you wanna just go along and do that, put a bit more soil around them, grow medium, whatever, firm them in, no problem, you can do that. So next thing, cover them up. My advice, opinion, if you want it, would be don't even bother trying to grow them without covering them up because if you do that, the, you know, the cabbage white butterflies can jump in there. So just a little thing, because you want to encourage them to grow bolt upright, what you can do is, if you're going to do it this way, you don't have to use bricks, use what you want, but you can put bricks like this, or even maybe like a T wood in the shape of a T to keep the, the cover, the netting off of the plants, or you could have a hoop or something like that, or a box, or wherever you want. Just encourage them to grow upright, and the netting you use, make sure that it's very fine knit. Cabbage ripe butterflies will get through anywhere given half a chance, so you don't wanna they'll decimate your crop. They'll lay eggs all over them and you won't end up with, you'll end up with strip plants and caterpillars everywhere, and you don't want that. Anyway, there we are. And uh, we shall await our delicious sprouts to come later in the year. Greetings, so 22nd of December and here I am at the allotment. So nearing Christmas now, and um, picking the Brussels sprouts here. So it's important to remember, these aren't a large variety, so the sprouts are small, probably not helped by the fact we had uh, that long, hot and dry summer. But either way, the majority of these haven't blown, which is great. So we're gonna have a look at what these sprouts look like and uh, go from there. Right, so walking along here, look, and uh, I had this one out, just pulled the whole plant out. And there you go, look. So they're nice sprouts. Look at them, look. Really happy with them. And you can see, look, not blown. Very firm sprouts. And we go all the way along the stem there, look. And uh, nice harvest. There's lots there as well. So uh, done very well. And uh, very heavy crop on this one plant. So let's approach this other plant here so you've noticed I've still kept the net on obviously protecting from the butterflies earlier in the year this time of year protecting from pigeons or whatever if they want them so let's just it's very difficult doing this one-handed but bear with me right so there you go see there look got a really nice size crop there look of Brussels sprouts so there you go you can just take out these sort of not so attractive looking outer leaves but yeah so once again nice crop on that uh, stem there so i'm going to take uh, all these plants out now right so let's have a look let's uh, so just take this one here now then look they're nice healthy sprouts aren't they and here as well, same again, you know, we've got the, uh, some of the outer leaves there are a bit brown, but that really don't matter. So we take that off, look, there you go. So that's the sprout there, look. So the outer leaves can be peeled. These will be really delicious, boiled or steamed. So of course, if we look at this one here, look, you can see just the huge crop that's on that of really nice little sprouts there. And even as we go right to the top of the stem here, you can see there is more sprouts forming. Of course, one would not have to peel, sorry, pick these at this time of year. One could wait into January, leave it a bit longer, but uh, I want these for Christmas. So, uh, yep, lovely jubbly crops on that one as well. So there we are, look, you can see my overall crop. Now, you can eat the tops, of course. So if you get a top like that, look, you can just break it off, look. Boil or steam that up, absolutely lovely. I'm sure a more accomplished chef or cook than me could do something a bit more, um, I don't know, what's the term, um, ambitious than just boiling it or steaming it. But let me know in the comments section below 
got any ideas for sprout cooking top sprout cooking whatever anyway so there we are look at that now you can see here look got dead leaves on there now of course it's not best practice to leave these on as the plant is growing can attract slugs and snails etc but that's just uh, how it is there's only a certain amount of time that one can uh, budget to gardening or allotment tearing but uh, best practice would certainly not to be not to allow that to happen as the plants grow and just remove them and uh, I like to compost mine in a compost bin accordingly so once again doing this one-handed so I'm just uh, going to cut these bottoms off here look there you go look so anyway I think you've got the idea you can see I cut the bottoms off look using the old secateurs there I've left the tops on I could break them off when I get them back and uh, they'll be boiled or steamed so there we are now you get the idea I think of uh, this sort of thing what I've done many of you would rather grow bigger sprouts than this I fully understand that um, you know you could look into bigger varieties have a look about there's loads of them out there but to uh, many of you aware I'd rather well generally I tend to grow more traditional varieties don't always but that's just uh, my gardening style everyone is different as they say anyway there we are have fun plenty more brassica videos coming up soon and if you would like to be notified when they come up please feel free to subscribe like and share this video if you think there's anyone else out there who would like to know about how to grow brussels sprouts that don't blow see you in the new year bye